Correlation is a measure of the strength of the relationship between two variables. Its mathematical definition produces a result which is always between negative one and positive one. A correlation close to negative one implies a negative relationship. If education and wages were negatively correlated, it would mean that more education corresponds to lower wages. A correlation close to zero implies no relationship. It would mean more schooling has no bearing on wages whatsoever. And a correlation close to positive one would mean that more education corresponds to higher wages. In our data, we observe a correlation of positive 0.431. It's not a perfect correlation, but it's definitely not zero either. So why can't we say that getting more education causes higher wages? Unfortunately, correlation does not imply causation. There are five reasons that two things, A and B say, could be correlated with one another. It could be as we think, that A is causing B. Maybe more education really is causing higher wages. But it could also be that B is causing A. Perhaps higher wages are causing people to get more schooling. That may sound crazy, but it's pretty easy to come up with an explanation. Maybe education is something rich people like to have. People might have a good sense of their future income and having a great college experience to reminisce about later in life is a luxury good that people want to buy, just like a big house and a nice car. So people who believe their future income will be high go ahead and get more education now. A third explanation for the correlation is that the causation could run both ways. Maybe education helps open some doors for highly productive people and highly productive people also want to consume more education. Alas, it could also be that there is some third factor causing both A and B, which are otherwise unrelated. Perhaps really smart people get more schooling and also get paid more. Maybe school doesn't have any impact on wages or vice versa. It is just this third variable, a person's smarts, that's causing both. I can think of a lot of other variables which might do this. Your parents' income probably has a big effect on how much schooling you get and what job opportunities are available to you. So would where you live or how motivated you are. There are a lot of third factors we might need to account for. But our fifth and last reason is the most important to understand. The correlation could just be random. It could very well be that for the 526 people in our data set, education was coincidentally correlated with wages, and that correlation would not apply to the population at large. Any one of these five explanations could be the reason for the correlation we see, and only one of them is compatible with our theory that sending someone to college will cause them to earn more money. So for any given correlation we find, which of these explanations do you think is the most common? Is it usually that A is causing B or is it one of the others? By far, by a gigantic margin, the most common reason we observe a correlation is randomness. Here, let me convince you. Take a look at this real life correlation. The divorce rate in Maine is very strongly correlated with the per capita consumption of margarine in the US. Why could this be? I guess it turns out that Mainers just aren't asking their romantic partners about their views on butter, and only after marriage, when they learn of their partner's preference for margarine, do they realize what a huge mistake they made. People in Vermont, they couldn't care less about this. Texans, not an issue, but in Maine, when margarine consumption is high, so is the divorce rate. The evidence is overwhelming with a correlation of 0.99. My theory is clearly proven by this. Maine would do well to simply ban margarine. I'm sure if they did, they would see divorce rates plummet. Or maybe it's that newly single divorcees in Maine are more likely to buy margarine. Maybe the causation is running the other way. Uh, you know what? No, I'm, I'm going to stick to my original theory on this one. Did you know that honey producing bee colonies have been in danger recently with their numbers falling? 
Well, it turns out, with less honey on the shelves, children, poor, innocent children, deprived of their sweet, delectable honey, have been turning to drugs, specifically to marijuana, and they're getting caught. Juvenile arrests for possession of marijuana have moved in the exact opposite direction as honey-producing bee colonies. With fewer bee colonies, arrests rise. Obviously, we need national legislation aimed at boosting honey-producing bee colonies as a new cornerstone of our drug policy. Or maybe it's those pesticides. No, no, hear me out. Maybe the pesticides are killing the bees, but they're also like messing with kids' brains and making them dumb enough to actually get caught using marijuana. Maybe it's not a popular theory, but hey man, I'm just out here asking questions no one else will ask. Speaking of crime, I know how to prevent several murders every year. When the winner of Miss America is a little on the older side, like say 24 or 25, there's this huge spike in the number of murders by steam, hot vapors, and hot objects. Yeah, that's right. This is a category the FBI tracks every year. When Miss America is 25 and people watching just can't take it, they're enraged. Leonardo DiCaprio wouldn't even date this woman. They look around and reach for something, a, a clothes iron maybe, and proceed to murder the nearest person with the steam from the iron. It's grisly stuff, but the data is undeniable. Or maybe, maybe, the young contestants are threatening the judges with hot pokers. When the young contestants win, they're appeased and they don't do a murder. But when they lose to the older girl, they follow through on their threat and off the judges. Maybe these things are causing each other via a vast conspiracy that reaches the highest levels of the pageant. Did you know that hundreds of people die every year by becoming entangled in their bedsheets? This is true. Look it up. Bed sheets kill more people than falling vending machines. Now you know why your mother made you make your bed. It's dangerous to leave those sheets in disarray. But had the bed sheets claimed you with their inescapable death weave, I am certain that your family would have taken the opportunity to go skiing. See, as it turns out, the revenues at skiing facilities have gone up in lockstep with the rise in bedsheet fatalities, and there is just no other explanation. Well, okay, there's one other explanation, which is that the skiing facilities themselves are responsible. We might want to check their bedsheets, because it could be that with a bigger crowd, they're just going to end up with more bedsheet deaths. We might need some regulators to take a look and make sure those sheets are up to code. It's easy to spin theories, and our brains are wired to do it, despite the reality we live in. The truth is that none of those theories I just spouted have even a remote chance of being right. They are the incoherent babblings of a lunatic, though I hope you find them funny. The truth is that all of those correlations are spurious, or due completely to random chance. There are people who've won the lottery a half dozen times. The moon is nearly the same apparent size in the sky as the sun. And for over 60 years, when the Washington football team won their home game before a presidential election, the incumbent party won that election. Randomness produces a lot of weird coincidences. Only through rigorous analysis can we eliminate the other four possibilities to arrive at the conclusion that the evidence supports our theory. Luckily, simple statistical methods allow us to cross out the possibility of our findings being due to chance alone, and any peer-reviewed scientific article will have cleared at least that bar. But what about explanations two through four? How do we eliminate those? 